Good morning. I am Master Sergeant Precious Roy, military training instructor trainer, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As the flights move into position, and for the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from entering the retreat pad and remain in your respective seating area when taking photos during the ceremony. Do not stand or sit in the stairways unless entering or exiting the grandstand. Additionally, we ask that you do not stand at the bottom of the grandstands as well as the arena drill pad. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you may proceed onto the retreat pad after the flights are dismissed. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Utilize the handrails and watch for tripping, slipping. This room facilities are located in the reception center and to the right of the flagpole. During this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. In the military, Ceremonies are held to accord distinctive honors to national symbols or individuals on special occasions. These ceremonies are also used to display the proficiency and state of training in a command and to promote teamwork and pride in the organization. They also contribute to public morale by displaying symbolically the strength and unity of the military in support of the nation. All of the movements that you will observe today are known as drill. The purpose of drill is to enable a commander or non-commissioned officer, such as the military training instructor, the ability to move their units from one place to another in an orderly manner, to aid in training by instilling discipline and habits of precision and response to the leader's orders, and to provide the development of all leaders in the practice of commanding formations. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the Air Force song, and the reciting of the Airman's Creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Now marching into position from the 331st Training Squadron, Flight 328, led by Master Sergeant Justin Barnes Castle, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Pima, Arizona. Flight 327, led by Technical Sergeant Zachary Waite, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown Appleton, Wisconsin. Flight 326, led by Master Sergeant Corey Hyman, Master Military Training Instructor, Hometown Atlanta, Georgia. Flight 325, led by Master Sergeant Roberto Villalobos, military training instructor, hometown Detroit, Michigan. From the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 324, led by Technical Sergeant Gregory McUrchin, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Bartlett, Illinois. Flight 323, led by Technical Sergeant Philip Edwards, Jr., Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown San Antonio, Texas.
Flight 322, led by Staff Sergeant Corey Unslavish, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Newark, Delaware. Flight 321, led by Technical Sergeant Cesar Silva, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Los Angeles, California. From the 320th Training Squadron, Academic and PT Excellence Flight, Flight 318, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Green, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Cleveland, Ohio. Flight 317, led by Technical Sergeant William Price, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Montgomery, Alabama. Flight 316, led by Technical Sergeant Samantha Erasmus, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Weatherford, Connecticut. Air Force Basic Military Training conducts graduation events over the course of two days to celebrate the accomplishments of our newest airmen. These events recognize their transition into the profession of arms. We acknowledge the tradition of honor and legacy of valor provided by those who came before and inspire us still today. We would also like to thank the family and friends for their continued support that these graduates will be counting on as they serve our great nation in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Evett. Scripture ver affirms in Isaiah 40, verse 31. Though youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up like wings, like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and walk and not grow faint. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the blessing of this coin ceremony, for the life each one of us have and the abilities that you've gifted us with, for these airmen who've developed in heart, mind, and soul and put out everything they have to become an airman in the world's greatest air force. We thank you for the blessing of their training from the military training instructors and those mentorship and support and leaders that have guided them along the way to this great moment. Give them continued desire to grow and confidence and courage to carry out our nation's mission. God, we thank you for the wisdom and grace that you've given each one of them. I pray that your spirit be upon them as they lead and grow in the way that they are created and called to be. We thank you for this time and this ceremony. In your holy name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. 
Good morning, and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 1989 graduate of basic military training, Colonel Billy Wilson, Jr. The senior enlisted leader, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 2003 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. Also in attendance with us today, the commander, 341st Missile Wing, Colonel Barry Little. The Command Chief, 341st Missile Wing, and 1997 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Charla, Charla Custilny. The Individual Mobilization Augmentee to the 37th Training Wing Commander, Colonel Jennifer Anderson. The Command Chief, 37th Training Wing, and 1997 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Carlos Damien. The Director of Staff, Montana Air National Guard Joint Force Headquarters, Colonel Timothy Crow. We would also like to welcome the 2024 Air Education and Training Command Squadron Leadership Course. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. This week, we have a special opportunity to recognize one additional and significant achievement demonstrating the dedication of 23 of our graduates who are being led by Technical Sergeant Dominique Reyes, Military Drill and Ceremonies Non-Commissioned Officer, hometown Huntington Beach, California. Today's recognition is made possible by a partnership between the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security to allow active duty service members to become citizens under the Naturalization at Basic Training Initiative. To be eligible, a member of the Armed Forces must pass a comprehensive application process administered by the Department of Homeland Security, including a background check and personal interview to demonstrate high moral character and their knowledge of the English language. Applicants are also tested on U.S. history and government. Please hold your applause until all have been announced. The Air Force is proud to recognize Sean Riley Bernal, country of origin, Philippines. Ye Truk, country of origin, Uganda. Kimani Williams, country of origin, Jamaica. Sean Webb, country of origin, Jamaica. Cruz Matute Sousa, country of origin, Honduras. Xiaoya Li, country of origin, China. Jiwoong Choi, country of origin, Korea. Henry Udagu, country of origin, Nigeria. Michelle Bolanos Vega, country of origin, Honduras. Kainoa Chatelli, country of origin, America Samoa. Jamel Yaguno Teneso, country of origin, Philippines. Luna Guzman Caceres, country of origin, Honduras. Vendula Murutkar, country of origin, Shet Republic. Alistair Subla Busico, country of origin, Philippines. Rachel Vano Nubalavu, country of origin, Fiji. Long Wen, country of origin, Vietnam. Stephen Rell, country of origin, Burma. Alicia K.R., country of origin, Nepa. Sarah Yoya Niotabi, 
country of origin, Cameroon. Miwako Yankovsky, country of origin, Japan. Christy Jane Tuol, country of origin, Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us congratulate the newest citizens of the United States of America. Musical support for this morning's ceremony is provided by Airmen from the 321st Training Squadron, performing under the direction of Technical Sergeant Matthew Zettemoyer, Military Training Instructor, hometown Augusta, Georgia. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic training syllabus and training requirements, Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force's core value, service before self. With each drum and bugle corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Master Sergeant Jimmy Welch will now come forward and address our graduating class. Hey, good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends, family, and loved ones gathered here today, I am deeply honored to stand before you as we celebrate the remarkable achievements of these graduates. First and foremost, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for being here to support these exceptional individuals on this momentous occasion. Your unwavering support, love, and encouragement have played an integral role in their journey to becoming the newest members of the United States Air Force. I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to recognize the veterans among us today. Your sacrifice, dedication, and service to our country have paved the way for these young men and women to follow in your footsteps. Your presence here today serves as a powerful reminder of the legacy of honor and excellence that each of these airmen are now a part of. Thank you for your service, and thank you for being here to witness this incredible moment. Will all the veterans please stand and be recognized? Next, I want to express my deepest appreciation to our military training instructors. These extraordinary individuals have devoted countless hours, energy, and expertise to shape and mold the next generation of airmen. Their commitment to excellence, coupled with their tireless dedication to instilling the core values of integrity, service, and excellence, have undoubtedly played a vital role in preparing our graduates for the challenges that lie ahead. To our MTIs, thank you for your hard work, your sacrifice, and your unwavering dedication to the Air Force mission. And now to our graduates. Today marks the culmination of your hard work, determination, and perseverance. You've endured rigorous training, faced countless obstacles, and pushed yourselves beyond your limits to reach this milestone. As you stand here today on the threshold of a new chapter in your journey, I want you to remember one thing. You are capable of achieving greatness beyond your wildest dreams. Don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. The journey is just beginning, and the challenges that lie ahead will test your strength, resilience, and character. Remember, the only way to grow stronger is to embrace the discomfort. Embrace the challenges that lie ahead, 
for it is in adversity that true character is forged. Every obstacle you overcome, every setback you endure, serves as a stepping stone towards greatness. Remember, on the other side of discomfort is where you find your true potential. Embrace the discipline instilled in you by your training, for it is the cornerstone of success in every aspect of life. Stay committed to your goals, stay focused on your mission, and never lose sight of the values that define who you are as an airman and as individuals. The challenges of tomorrow will demand nothing less than the best from each and every one of you. Stay vigilant, stay prepared, never, wa never waver in your commitment to defending our nation and upholding the ideals of freedom and democracy for which we proudly serve. In closing, I leave you with this. Never underestimate the power of your own potential. Don't focus on what you think you deserve. Take aim at what you're willing to earn. Great things come from hard work and perseverance. Believe in yourselves, trust in your training, and never lose sight of the extraordinary feats you're capable of achieving. Do hard things, both physically and mentally. It will make you a more resilient person and airman. Be the uncommon amongst uncommon people. The journey ahead will not be easy, but it will be worth it. Embrace the challenges, seize the opportunities, and never forget the incredible honor and privilege it is to wear the United States Air Force uniform. The future is yours to shape, and I have every confidence that you will do so with courage, integrity, and excellence. Graduates, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Wilson and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson that you receive your coveted Airman's Coin, signifying your transformation from civilian to Airman. Congratulations, Airman. Military training instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's Coin, and for the first time, the State Space Force Coin to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur, until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem, and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest air force.
Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Ditterly will now come forward and address our graduating class. All right, good morning, Air Force family. More specifically to all the moms, dads, spouses, partners, brothers, sisters, grandparents, significant others, everyone in attendance on this humid Texas spring day in support of our graduates. Today I have the great privilege of introducing you to 599 of the nation's newest airmen. They are all warthogs, wolves, gators, and knights of the 737th Training Group. First, turning attention to our guests in attendance, today is likely bittersweet for you all. While I'm sure you are beyond proud of your loved one's accomplishments, there are likely many with some degree of hesitation or even nervousness as your airman starts the next chapter of their military service. I need you to feel rest assured, though. The military family your loved ones are now part of cares deeply. This family, comprised of over 350,000 professionals, will always go to great lengths to care, develop, and provide your sons and daughters a sense of belonging. This sense of belonging extends to all of you as well, so welcome to the family. To our newest airmen, just like your family members, I'm sure you experienced a range of emotions during drop-off. Through conversations, I know some of you came from military families. You prepped for months or even years. You arrived excited, already knowing how to march and recite the Airmen's Creed. For others, you are the first in your family's history to serve your country. You arrived nervous, anticipating what military training would be like. Regardless, you succeeded, and in many cases, exceeded expectations. During these past seven and a half weeks, I know you've had plenty of time to internally reflect on this journey. If I may, let me try to summarize those thoughts and how they evolved over the course of training. Week zero, AKA drop off. All right, I'm here, I've got this, let's get to work. Week one, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Week two, I still don't know what I got myself into, but things are starting to make sense. I'm learning and getting stronger. Week three, I now see the value of teamwork. My wingmen have my back and I have theirs. Week four, we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel but shortly after that, our instructor gave us a loud reminder that we still have a lot of work to do. Week five, yes, I passed my PT test. Hopefully my teammates pass too. I'm proud of how the flight continues to develop. Week six, we are firing on all cylinders. There's nothing we can't accomplish as a team. And something that I know was thought about from all of you, I can't wait to get my cell phone back next week. Week seven, while marching to this ceremony, I am a better version of myself than I was six weeks ago. I can't wait to see my family to see that change. I'm ready to serve. I will not fail. You'll notice a theme here. Over the seven and a half weeks, your use of I and me changed to we and us. You learned that teamwork is everything when it comes to the defense of our nation. Over these next few days, I ask you to reflect on this experience and find someone to thank. Whether you are the top graduate or struggled the entire time, I guarantee a fellow wingman helped you along the way. Whether it was a life-changing interaction or a quick pointer to help you pass a progress check, teamwork advanced you further. Going forward, the nation you now serve has high expectations of you. Please know your squadron leadership teams and instructors are extremely proud of you. Relish every moment and a job very well done. To our military training instructors, thank you for being awesome day in and day out. You dedicated tremendous amounts of time to inspire, motivate, and mold these professionals while making sacrifices in your personal lives. Many of your greatest successes also went unthanked. I am referring to those times where you figuratively changed hats from intense instructor to caring mentor during the difficult times many trainees endure. Your encouragement and guidance is very likely the reason many of these graduates made it across the finish line. Please know that you are highly valued. It's humbling executing this BMT mission with you all. Let's give them one more round of applause, please. All right, Airmen, I'll leave you with this. Going forward, please capitalize on the skills and strength you learned here at training. Harness and be proud of the uniqueness each of you brings to the fight. Being the world's superpower is extremely difficult. It's not always fanfare and air shows. 
It takes hard work, sacrifice, and dedication, but it's achievable because of you. Godspeed, congratulations, and lastly, one team, congrats. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Ditterly. At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer, someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in the challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from the 321st Training Squadron, Flight 320, Arion Johnson. He is from Houston, Texas, and joined the Air Force to become a refueler and bomber aircraft maintenance journeyman. In the stands cheering are his mother, Tashika, father, Andrew, and his grandparents, James and Catherine. His recruiter is Technical Sergeant Trisha Palladini, 341st Recruiting Squadron, Humble, Texas. Please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Thank you. Please be seated. Instructors, place your flights at ease. This morning, we honor our heritage of military customs and traditions as we welcome our newest airmen into the ranks of the Department of the Air Force. There are two purposes for this morning's retreat ceremony. The retreat ceremony is a solemn event conducted at every United States military installation around the globe. It signifies the end of the official duty day and today is symbolic of the end of a training for our graduates. But more importantly, it is to pay respect to our nation's flag. When we offer our respect for our flag and to our national anthem, we have an opportunity to reflect on the democratic principles that have made our nation great. The meaning of freedom, dignity of the individual, the pursuit of happiness, and national unity all come to mind when you think of our flag. It is the symbol of our nation to the world. Military members have a special bond with the flag. These airmen are part of the flag's tradition because they symbolize the spirit and sacrifices of the military and dedication to defense of this great nation and the principles it represents. When we salute the flag as it is lowered, we ask you to think. Think about the flag flying over Arlington and other national cemeteries. Think about the flag being carried into combat by the service members who preceded us. Think about the freedom Americans enjoy today, freedom without precedent in the history of the world. The men and women who stand before you today represent the projection of the strength behind our flag. Our flag security detail consists of members from the 324th Training Squadron, led by Master Sergeant Gabriel Salazzo. Our commander of airmen is Captain Rebecca Mick.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of reveling. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It is flown at half staff to honor our military members. The flag has flown in every battle 
of every war for more than 200 years. It has flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, in the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. The flag has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped set free. Yet it remains invincible. Please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. Families with graduates in the Drum and Bugle Corps are asked to wait for their graduates on the north side of the West Bleachers while they secure their equipment. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when descending the bleachers. Town Pass ends at 2000 hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you, and please enjoy your stay at the 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. <laughs> 